Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some cool community posts along with some interesting updates on the Power BI side. If you've been watching our live streams or maybe you haven't been watching our live streams, we are dropping clips from those live streams over on a second YouTube channel, GIAC Clips. So if you're interested in that and just the individual questions and some of the responses, go check that out. We drop them every day. All right, with that, let's dig in. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at how do you display routes on a map? So think about that. If you have different routes and maybe you want to select a route or a different route, how do you do that? And what he walks through is a follow-up on a previous blog that he had where he's actually using the icon map visual. And in there you can use the WKT format or well-known text, and he can actually get call the API for Azure Maps to get those routes displayed and then put that in the map using the icon map visual. It's a pretty interesting trick. He walks through how he's actually doing it, how he's actually calling the Azure Maps API. And also at the bottom, there's a really good nugget about the authentication piece. I won't spoil it here. So if you want to check this out and you're interested in displaying routes on a given map, it might be interesting for like logistic companies or different types of scenarios, check out the blog post links down below in the description, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Alberta Ferrari's got an article slash video of how do you create KPIs inside of Power BI? This has been something that I have talked with folks a lot way back, even when Power BI was first created inside of Tabular or inside of Power Pivot in Excel you could create these KPIs, but in Power BI Desktop, that option wasn't available. If you had created it inside of a Power Pivot model or analysis services, and then imported that or, or connected to that from a Power BI perspective, it would honor it, but there was no way to actually create it inside of Power BI. Well, now with Tabular Editor being able to do certain items, you can actually enable KPI support inside of Power BI Desktop itself. Now, Berto walks you through how to actually do that, how to use tabular editor to actually go through that process. It's actually a very cool item to look at if you're interested in creating KPIs. Megan Lagoria has got a blog post and the title of it was fun with power BI and color math. Hmm. Piqued my interest. If you're not familiar with Megan, she is a strong advocate for accessibility and all of those items when it comes to a report or just visualizations in general. And so when I saw color math, I knew it had something to do with accessibility, but what she's done is created an actual report where you can plug in two different colors to actually see the contrast ratio between them. And the math involved here has to do with the luminosity or luminous levels of those given colors. And she walks through those items and all the math, the calculations that are involved in doing that breaks down like what the color actually is from the red, green, and blue as well as the alpha layers or the transparencies. So she's it's just a good blog post to go through. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I definitely recommend checking it out to be aware. And if, if you are working, if you're actually being mindful about colors in your report and contrast and accessibility, which you should, this is something that can help you in that journey as well. So definitely check it out. She's got a report there as well that you can download to take advantage of it. For some updates on the Power BI side for data protection. If you're not familiar with data protection, this is the idea of adding sensitivity labels to content and data. This is something that's been available on the Office side and just Office 365 all up for a while. And now Power BI has been taking advantage of that as well and plugging into that ecosystem. So some of the updates that are available now is, so if you've got a data set that has a sensitivity label on it and you're connecting to that from Excel, whether you're just connecting directly or you're doing analyze in Excel, it will inherit that data label with inside of Excel, which is very cool. One aspect of that is if the data label changes to a more restrictive label later on, Excel's going to pick that up. The other aspect of this is inheritance from a report dashboard perspective. So say if you've got a given report that has a sensitivity label on it, and then you go create a dashboard in the Power BI service, the dashboard will then inherit the data set of the lower item. And same thing with like a data set and a report. If the data set has it, you create the report, the report then inherits what the data set actually has, which is very cool. So now these items are gonna flow from a lineage perspective 
to enable those restrictions on your given content. If you're using the data protection features, definitely check this out. If you're not using data protection, your organization should definitely look at this to see if it's something you should enable to help protect your data and protect items from potentially leaking outside of that organization. It's, it's just another secure layer that you can stick on top of your content. This actually came out last week, but we missed the roundup last week. So I definitely wanted to cover it here. The Power BI Desktop August 2020 update did come out. So that is available now. Yay! Always like a new desktop update. First off, make sure that you've updated to the latest version. So August 2020 is that current version. There were some items that were added inside of this that are interesting. So first off is personalization and perspectives. So perspectives is something that you can enable from a data set perspective. Hey, <laughs> it's not something you can enable or create directly inside of Power BI Desktop. So you have to do that in something like Tabular Editor using like the external tool approach. But if you've created that perspective and you've enabled personalization of visuals inside of your report, when an end user or consumer of that report goes into that aspect of it, then they will see whatever that perspective is. Patrick's working on a video in September for this specific feature to help walk you through what this actually is. So stay tuned on that. The rectangle lasso was also updated. So before it was to select multiple visuals, but now there are visuals that have this enabled so you can use that rect rectangle lasso directly in the visual. So think of this on like a line chart. If you have multiple data points and normally when you select on a given item, it just selects that single item to cross filter other visuals. But now you can use the rectangle lasso to select maybe three of those data points and that's gonna do the cross filter action. So that's kind of neat. Another very big deal is the Q and A feature has a preview feature enabled for direct query over SQL. So this is on-premises SQL Server 2019, Azure SQL Database, Azure Synapse Analytics. If you're using those data sources, you can actually enable Q&A support if you're using direct query. Just be aware from a performance perspective that it may not be as spunky as if you had imported data. The other big thing I saw that a lot of folks were jumping on is the new from example capabilities with text and CSV. So if you have a text file or a CSV file, you can actually do from example on those types of data sources, which is very cool. Maybe asking why would I even need that? And if you have a text or CSV file, that's not a standard format and it's not easily just imported directly. You can use the from example to extract that data in a meaningful way into your data set. Again, make sure that you've updated to the latest version of Power BI Desktop to take advantage of all of these items. Also, be sure to review the preview feature area to make sure you've enabled those items that you want to explore and take advantage of. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.